It's been a check. Oh, ready, yeah? Okay, Bishar. <coughs> فطر الخلائك بقدرته ونشر الرياح برحمته ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين الذين أذهب الله أنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد قال الله عز وجل في كتابك الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله لا يغير ما بقوم حتى يغير ما بأنفسهم آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم Once again, we thank Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for gracing us with this wonderful moment to continue to acquire the understanding of our faith and to continue to try as much as we can to seek nearness to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As you all know, my beloved brothers and sisters, the essence or the aim of life it is to seek nearness or proximity to Allah Azza wa Jalla. And the verse I've just quoted from glorious Quran, Mu'mineen and Mu'minat, is Quran number 13, verse 11. It's a known verse, long verse, but I quoted just part of the verse. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says, Inna Allah la yugayyiru ma bi qawmin hatta yugayyiru ma bi anfusihim. Indeed, Allah will not change what is with people until and unless they change what is in themselves. In other words, if you truly want to bring about change, it begins with you. You have to change what is in you. Once you change what is in you, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala will make it easy for you to realize the change you aspire to achieve. Now, departing from this beautiful ayah of glorious Quran, our topic of discussion tonight, as you know very well, is how to change our behavior and then reduce discrimination in our community. My examination will be of the following stages. The first stage is to look at the importance of community within the religion of Islam. And then the second stage of my examination is to discuss a question. Do we have the potential to change or not? And then the last stage of my examination is to then look at practical tips on how to bring about change and to reduce discrimination within our communities. As you know very well, my dear brothers and sisters, we are Muslims and we are lovers and followers of Ahl al-Bayt. We do have no better place to take our guidance and teachings more than Quran and Ahl al-Bayt alayhim alaf al-tahiyyati wa thana. Quran and prophetic traditions discuss the importance of a community and the need to have a community. And Quran in doing so highlights some of the qualities of successful and good communities. So what I'm going to do in this first stage of the examination is to draw my attention and humbly draw the attention of each and every one of you in regards to the importance of having sense of belonging to your community. You see, 
Scholars, when they discuss having sense of belonging to one's community or the need to have a community, they discuss three major needs. They said the first type of a need is what we call natural need. Natural need is like our need for food. Our need for water is natural need. You cannot do without it. Without food and water, one will not be able to survive. The second type of need is what they call compelling need. What is compelling need? It's like our need for medication. When may God forbid one falls ill, you need medication. Illness or sickness is not something natural. It is something that comes to us. So therefore, our need for medicine, for tablets, when we are not well, is compelling. I'm compelled, I'm obliged, I'm forced. The third type of a need is what scholars call need by choice. What is need by choice? It's like our need to dress nice clothes or our need to look presentable. Say you are invited for a program or you are going somewhere or you've got something to do with your family and you dress nicely. It's not a natural need to dress nicely. It's not a compelling need to dress nicely, but it is a need by choice to dress something beautiful. Now question, to belong to a community, is it a natural need? Is it a compelling need? Or is it a need by choice? Beautifully, as per the teaching of Quran, to belong to a community or to have a sense of belonging is a natural need. It's not a compelling need. It's not a need by choice. You, it's natural that one has to belong to a community. Now, the question is, what is a community? The simple definition we get for a community is when group of people come together to run their affairs under one rule or same rules and regulations, they are called a community. So either people in the city or people in small towns or people in small villages, when they come together to say, let us do things together, but under this constitution or under these rules or under these regulations, they are called community. We've got small community, we've got big community. Kindly pay attention. Small community, maybe a group of people come together and then they set up something they start doing. Or your tribes, people that you share the same language with them, you come together, you form a community, you build. We also have what is called a human community. Human community is you know, a community where people who share humanity come together. Another example is like our country. We are under one constitution. So we are a community. So you can see different forms of community. And when you go to Quran, Quran discusses all these forms of community. But then Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, in discussing these forms of community, he warned us to say what is important and what should make you more proud is when you surpass people in doing righteous deeds, in becoming good and true servant of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam does not give us the body impulse to discriminate against others. Those that are not in our community. Islam regard it as haram. Be proud of your community. Be proud of who you are. But don't forget that you are human beings and others are human beings. They've got feelings, you've got feelings. They've got emotions, you have emotions. And so that beautiful verse, which you all know, Quran 49, verse 13, 
inna akramakum inda Allahi atkakum. The most honorable or honored in the lens of Allah amongst you is the one who fear Allah the most. Now, do we have the potential to change or not? I said, yes. We all have potential to change our behaviors, to become better people, to become better human beings. Either spiritual or social or economical or whatever we do in life. But now our focus is on community. Have your community. Be proud of it. But don't forget that it will be haram if you undermine and discriminate against others. And so, when you examine yourself as human being, you realize that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala has given you the power and has given me the power or the potential to bring about change. If I truly and I'm sincere in wanting to bring or change myself, Allah has given you that power to do so. And I'm going to explain this. Kindly pay attention. The ayah I quoted, Quran 13 verse 11, Allah will not change you. Allah will not change your behavior until you change it yourself. You will only be good if you want to be good. You will be cherished by Allah if you truly want to be cherished by Allah. You know, there's this scholar who won Nobel Peace Prize 1983 by the name of Roger Esprit. He made a research when it comes to human brain. And out of that research, he won Nobel Peace Prize. He said brain is divided into two halves. The right part of the brain and the left part of the brain. And according to him, the right part of the brain always wants change. But the left part of the brain doesn't want to change at all. And he said, you find among human beings, those who want change and those who don't want to hear about change at all, they are stuck. And he said, there are those who at the same time want change and sometimes they don't want change. So they are lefties and righties at the same time. Meaning the left side of their brain is working and the right side of the brain is working at the same time. We all require change in behavior, but not every change. The change we are talking about is positive change. We don't want change for the sake of changing, but we do want positive change. To change our akhlaq to be the best to change our behavior to be the best towards other human beings. If you examine yourself as human being, you realize that you are a soul, a ruh, made up of four things. And these four things are always in constant change. So you cannot afford but to strive for positive change in your life. The first thing that goes around our soul is our body, this body. And body is always changing, isn't it? Quran says, You are created stage by stage by Allah. At one stage, you were infants. You, become adoles you became adolescent. You became youth, adults. Go, go. You keep changing. This is to tell you that it is always important to aspire to change positively. The second part of our soul or the second tool around our soul is our akl, intellect. Intellect is also changing. 10, 20 years ago, your intellectual capability wasn't like the way it is today. So it means intellect is changing. It is to signal to you that you need to aspire for positive change in your life. 
Number three, two, that is around our soul is what? It's our kalb, our heart. Heart is also changing, isn't it? Quran makes it very clear that this heart, when God is inside, it has sukun. When there is no God, there is no sukun. And heart also sometimes is moody, either in a good mood or in a bad mood. So we are in constant change. And the last tool of our self or our ruh is what? Is time and space. Time and space is also changing. So our life evolves around these four things that I've just mentioned. They are always in constant change. So therefore, in San, you cannot afford but to aspire to change positively. Now we are talking about our behavior and how to try as much as we can not to discriminate against others. You know, Allah created us as social beings. We are social by nature. What do we mean by say insan is social by nature? You are created to love and to be loved. You are created to understand and to be understood. You are created to respect and to be respected. You are created to reach out to and to be reached out to. We are social beings. Hence, it is important. We always do self-introception and look at our akhlaq and behaviors and ask ourselves, are we treating others? the way we would like ourselves to be treated. So therefore, we have the potential to change. Now question, which is the last stage of my examination. What do we have to do to reduce discrimination within our communities? No doubt, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, discrimination has no rule or no room, excuse me, within the religion of Islam. Discrimination is uncivilized. It is un-Islamic. And whoever discriminates will be questioned by Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. I'm going to give some practical steps on how to reduce this discrimination. The first practical step, my dear brothers and sisters, that I would like to invite myself and to invite you to reflect on, if you truly want to reduce discrimination within our communities and to try as much as we can to change our behaviors, is to go back to Quran and the traditions of Prophet and Ahlul Bayt and to try as much as we can to obey Quran and obey Ahlul Bayt alayhim ala fa tahiyyati wa thana. What does Quran say? So that's the first point. We want to do, reduce discrimination. Let's go back to Quran. Let's knock the door of Quran. When a person is sick, what does he do? He goes to the GP, general practitioner. You knock the door of your GP or you give him a call. I'm coughing. I've got fever then the GP will tell you what to do. And if the GP tells you what to do and you do not do, will you be cured? You will not be cured. Your situation will be worse, isn't it? It will be worse. Likewise, when we've got behavioral problem, when we have the issue in terms of our behavior, when you realize that you discriminate against others, the first door to knock as a Muslim, as a lover of Ahl al-Bayt, is to knock the door of Quran and the traditions of Prophet and Ahlul Bayt alayhi wasalam. What does Quran say, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, which we all need to reflect on and keep reminding ourselves? Chapter Nisa, verse 1. Allah makes it very clear. Ya ayyuhan nas, ittaku rabbakum alladhi khalakakum min nafsin wahida. He said, O oh people, Fear Allah, your Lord, who created all of you from one single soul. All of 
of us, irrespective of our geographical demarcations, irrespective of our status, irrespective of our backgrounds, irrespective of where we are coming from, we are all created from one single soul by Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Our origin is one. So we truly want to change and reduce discrimination. First door is Quran. Another ayah of Quran makes it very clear that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ خَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ he said, amongst the signs of Allah is the creation of the heaven and the earth. Allah created heaven and earth as his signs. And then other signs, he said what? The differences of languages and the differences of skins you have are signs of Allah. Then Allah says, in the ayatin, in all these, there are signs for those who reflect and ponder. We look different. Why? Because these are signs of Allah. So implement the teaching of Quran. Reflect on the verse of Quran. It will help us to reduce discrimination. Another ayah of Quran, chapter Baqarah, makes it very clear. ummatan wahida. People were one single ummah, one single nation. This ayah is trying to say, we are one, irrespective of our differences. In essence, we are one. You know where do we differ? In substance. What is important is the essence. So if you reflect on this and the creation of Allah, it should inspire you to try as much as you can to treat others the way you would like to be treated, to talk to others the way you would like to be talked to, to love others the way you would like to be loved. And of course, if you come to the traditions of our beloved prophets, peace be upon him and his family and Ahlul Bayt. Rasulullah makes it very clear. He said, oh people, your Lord is one. Your father is one, meaning Adam. And you are all from Adam. There is no superiority between us except with taqwa. And Imam Amir al-Muin said, Anas sawasiya ka asnan al People are equal, like comb. And so the first practical step is to refer to Quran which is a very, very important. And of course, Ahlul Bayt. That Ahlul Bayt brought everyone around them, irrespective of who they were, irrespective of their background. Ahlul Bayt said, come together. Ahlul Bayt love people. And that is what I and you need to do to follow the footsteps of Ahlul Bayt, alayhi wa That is number one. The second practical step, if you truly want to reduce discrimination within our communities, we need to get organized in doing this. Because this requires serious energy. And what do I mean by saying getting organized to do things? Because when you get organized, you come together, it makes life easier. How do we do? We need to preach and talk against discrimination. We need to talk against it because it's against the teachings of Allah and it's against the traditions of the Prophet and it's against the constitutions of our countries. Come together, talk against it. Remind people when they come to the centers. Remind people when they come to the mosques. When you do it in an organized way, it becomes more effective and members of the communities will take it serious. Number three, we as individuals, we need to speak against it. When you see discrimination of whatever form, wherever it is, talk against it. Because if it is done to you, you will not be happy. So this is what Islam called Amr bil Ma'roof. Talk against it. 
and draw people's attention is very, very important. And number four, which is also crucial, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, always when you pray, ask Allah wa ta'ala to soften your hearts towards others and to perfect your akhlaq towards others. Because we're talking about reducing discrimination. Re discrimination is bad akhlaq. And the Holy Prophet of Islam, he came to do what? To perfect high moral standard, to perfect good akhlaq. That's what Prophet came to do, to perfect our good akhlaq. And he says it very clear. Bu'iftu li'utammima makarim al-akhlaq. I'm sent to perfect the high moral standard or high moral characters or high morals. That's what prophet came to do. And so therefore it's important. We as individuals, when we pray to ask Allah wa ta to perfect our akhlaq and to perfect our behaviors. And you know that beautiful tradition from our beloved prophet Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. That our bro, uh, prophet mentioned. La yu'minu ahdukum. Hatta yuhibba li akhihi ma yuhibba li nafsi. Your iman will not be established until you love for your brother what you love for yourself, isn't it? You need to love for that person what you love for yourself. If you don't love for him what you love for yourself, then you are not a true believer. You are not a true mu'min. And Imam Ali alayhi salam makes it very clear. When he sent Malik Ashtar to Egypt, isn't it? He said, you find two types of people. It's either your brother in faith or your equals in humanity. So therefore, number four, make dua. Seek divine intervention. And if you look at the du'as of Ahl al-Bayt, we even have du'a makarim al-akhlaq. This du'a is to signal to us the importance of making du'a to ask Allah to perfect our akhlaq and to perfect our behaviors. Because what we are trying to do now, we're trying to talk about akhlaq, isn't it? And if our akhlaq is good, Allah is happy with us. So make dua, ask Allah to perfect that akhlaq. And Prophet makes it very clear. When you go out there, your akhlaq should be the akhlaq of Allah. This brings me to the fifth step. What is the fifth way of reducing it? Remember, remember. As for the tradition of our beloved prophet, people are families of Allah. People are Allah's family. They are created by Allah. Allah loves them. And she wants you to love them. So always remind yourself, when I go out, I'm dealing with the families of Allah. Will you undermine the family of Allah, will you discriminate towards the family of Allah? And number six, remember, discrimination is a guna. It's a sin. Whenever you discriminate against someone, if you do not go back to him to ask for forgiveness, Allah will not forgive you. It is not like a sin between you and Allah. Any sin between you and Allah, Allah forgives. But a sin between you and me, or between you and someone, Allah does not forgive. And that's very, very important. And Surah Al-Hujurat makes it very clear. Don't talk ill of others. Always think good of others. And the seventh step, my dear brothers and sisters, if you truly want to reduce discrimination within our communities, 
We need to try as much as we can, all our communities, if we can, to have anti-discrimination policies. Because our centers are places where we call the Allah, where we call Ahlul Bayt, alayhim ala for tahiyyati wa thana. There are not places that we want to discriminate towards others. And so therefore, what mean and what not? Change begins with me. It begins with you as an individual. If you do not make a move, no one will make a move. Each individual has to go back to him or herself and ask himself a question. Am I discriminating towards others? If yes, try to change. The door of Allah is wide open. We are not masumin. We are not perfect. It is not late. The door of Makfira is open until the day of the arm. We need to do this tadabbur and tafakkur and do self interception. And once you do self interception, you need to pledge that in going forward, I'm going to try my level best not to discriminate against anyone. Pledge. And you will see Allah will help you. And you will achieve that. And of course, the last point but not least is to instill the value of Islam in our children. What is that value? The value of love for all. Islam taught us when we bring our children, we have to instill good values and good morals in them. And you know the best way to do so when it comes to our children is to lead them by example. Let your children see you doing it. Let your children see you portraying good akhlaq. Let your children see you respecting others. Let your children see you talking good about others who are good. They will follow suit. They will follow your footstep. But if you do something contrary to that and you expect your children to be good, they will not be good, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. And so therefore, let us take things, uh, these lessons and try as much as we can to reflect and ponder. We need to instill that in our children. These are the values of Ahlul Bayt, alayhim ala fi tahiyyati wa sana. And lastly, in conclusion, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, the Holy Prophet of Islam, before even he left this world, he reminded us of the two-way teachings, which I mentioned earlier on, and I want to conclude this sermon with it. I'm living for you two-way teachings. The book of Allah and my Ahlul Bayt. Why am I mentioning this? Because all the solutions are in the book of Allah and the lives of Ahlul Bayt. If you hold unto the book of Allah and Ahlul Bayt, you will find solutions to all these issues that we are faced with. So therefore, Mu'minin and Mu'minat, we should not give up. We should know that we've got the potential and the strength to change. And the Quran makes it very clear. Those who strive in our way, we will guide them towards our way. And another ayah says, وَأَن لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى وَأَنَّ سَعَيَهُ سَوْفَ يُرَى Insan is nothing but your own effort. If you make effort, that effort will be seen. You are who you are because of your effort and determinations. And don't forget that. 
When Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala created animals, he gave them desire and imagination, isn't it? But when he created angels, he gave them akal without desire and imagination. And when he created I and you insan, he gave us akal, desire, and imagination. And because of this, insan is ashraful makhlukat. Why are you ashraf? Because you've got the potential to undertake actions to become better human beings. And Allah made insan is khalifa on earth. Why is khalifa on earth? Because insan is the only one who can portray and represent the good akhlaq of Allah. Allah is Rahman, and he wants you to be Rahman in your own way towards others. Prophet makes it very clear. Man fil ardi, man fil sama. Be merciful to those on earth. The one in heaven will show mercy unto you. Allah is Ra'uf. He wants to see that Ra'ufat or Ra'uf in you. And so therefore, Mu'minin and Mu'minat. Let us always remind ourselves of Quran and traditions of Ahl al-Bayt, alayhi wassalam. Lastly, we pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to forgive our marhumin and grant them Jannah al firdaus All of us, those who are watching us, one way or the other, we do have our marhumin. We pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to forgive them and to grant them neighborhood of Ahl al-Bayt alayhi salatu was salam in their lives of barzah. We pray to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, mu'mineen and mu'minat, even beyond mu'mineen and mu'minat, those who are not well, may Allah cure them and make it, make it easy for them to overcome their sickness. We have one of our sheikhs, Sheikh Mustafa Ja'far of London, Stanmore, who is not well. He's been at the hospital for a week or more now. We pray to Allah wa ta'ala to make it easy for him and to cure him with his cure. And all those who are not well, whether through corona or through any other type of sickness, Ya Allah, Ya Hakki Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad, make it easy for them. And we pray to Allah wa ta'ala, we those who are well, May Allah continue to shower us with the blessings and the mercy of health and make it easy for us, inshallah. And, uh, uh, and mu'minin and mu'minat, wherever you are, take care of yourself, inshallah. Be alert, inshallah. Take care of your health and Allah will bless you and shower his mercy on all of you. Aqulu kawli hadha wa astaghfirullah ali wa lakum. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. اللهم كل لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه الطاهرين في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصل اللهم على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته